Konnichiwa, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to my Japanese Faves series where we'll cover every major type of Japanese food. This lesson is tonkatsu, which is basically a fried pork cutlet. Ton means pork in Japanese. It's very similar to German schnitzel. Incidentally, butaniku also means pork in Japanese. My tonkatsu was inspired by Shimbo's kushikatsu in the excellent The Japanese Kitchen Cookbook. Instead, I'm making traditional tonkatsu with not exactly traditional pork tenderloin, served with a not quite traditional coleslaw, shredded cabbage is traditional, along with a traditional Worcestershire sauce-based sauce and my own mustard-based sauce, which I actually prefer. I have videos on making both of these sauces. No, don't confuse tonkatsu with an A after the K with tonkatsu with an O after the K. The latter is essentially a braised pork broth which is used with ramen. So let's start cooking. Okay, now before we prep our pork tenderloin, we need to heat the oven to 450 degrees. We also need to heat our oil to 360 degrees. Right now, your pork tenderloin should already be trimmed of excess fat and the silver skin. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off the kind of the pointy ends, all right? And then, and we're gonna use those for some other purpose. We're not gonna waste them. And then we're gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna make this half slightly smaller because it's thicker. This half is a little thinner, so I'm gonna make that just a little bit more than half. Cutting this into two pieces, okay? Now, um, if you were making this for uh, two people, which is what the video in the description is for, you'd use both of these. I'm only going to do one of these for the video. Right now, uh, I'm only going to fry one of these uh, pieces, but I'm going to pound both of them. I've put them both on the cutting board next to each other, and I put a, a piece of plastic wrap over the top. Then we're just going to gently pound them. Now, what are we going for here? We're not tenderizing by doing this because, because pork tenderloin is already very tender, okay? What we're going for is to have a piece that is kind of uniform in its thickness and in its width. We're just going to pound it gently so we get something that's about the same thickness. And I'd say this is probably about an inch thick now that we've pounded it a bit. It's a little wider at one end. Now let's take off the plastic. We're going to get rid of that. And then we're going to season. If you've watched my uh, course, you know, seasoning means only and always salt and pepper. I use uh, kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper always. And I also like to uh, pat it in, okay, so it doesn't all fall off when you work it, all right? So then we're going to turn it over, we're going to put a little bit of salt on the other side and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper on the other side and pat that in. Okay, now we're going to dredge the pork in flour, okay? and. Dredging just means to put it in the flour and get it totally coated all around, okay? All of the sides. And you can use your fingers, or I'm using tongs because I like to try to work clean. Um, and you're going to do all of your pork pieces like this, all right? Then shake off the extra flour and put it into your egg wash. And, and then shake your flour so it, it uh, spreads ev evenly across the pan again. And then get your egg wash all over the pork. Okay. And then we're going to put it back in the flour. All right. If you, add, if you need more flour, just add it. I start out with less than I, you know, with what I think I'm going to need. I try not to waste any, right? So I start off lesser amount. I can always add to that, right? And get it all coated with the flour again. 
and then put it back in the egg wash. All right, then we're gonna put it into the panko. And we wanna get it coated all over with the panko. If you need more panko, add some. You can always move it around in the pan a little bit to get make the best use of what you have there. If I were doing more than one, I would obviously need more panko. I think I put in just enough to do this piece. We get it well coated with the panko. And um, in the description, it says that the pork should be room temperature. This is very important, very important, because we're gonna be putting it into hot oil, and the moment you put it into the hot oil, even at room temperature, the temperature of the oil is gonna drop. If you um, start out with cold pork, it's gonna drop the temperature of the, of the oil even more, and you're not gonna get the results that you want. Okay, now we're gonna put our pork into the oil at 360 degrees. And we're gonna let it fry for just a very short time. What we wanna do is just firm up the, um, the breading, all right? So we're gonna go for just a very light golden, only just another few seconds, all right? Now, we're gonna take this out, let it drain and rest, and you're gonna reduce your heat to 300 degrees. When it gets down to 300 degrees, we're gonna fry it again. Okay, the temperature of our oil is down to 300 degrees, so we're gonna put the pork back into the oil, and we are gonna regulate our temperature so we can keep it at 300, and we're gonna let that fry for, until it's um, mm, kind of a medium golden light brown color, okay? And you might be wondering, well, why did we turn on the oven at 400 degrees? The reason is, once this gets to a nice color, a nice color of the breading, we're gonna take it out of here, we're gonna let it rest for a little bit, and then we're gonna slice it. And if it's still too undercooked, we're gonna finish it in the oven, okay? So we're gonna let this fry until we have a light brown, dark golden color. Okay, it's been about eight minutes, and we have like a nice light brown, dark golden color here. We're gonna take it out of the oil, and then we're gonna let it rest on some crumpled brown paper, which is what we always do with um, deep fried things. We're gonna let that rest for uh, about um, three to five minutes. Okay, it's been uh, four minutes we've been resting. Now we're going to slice this diagonally and see what we got. Oh, it's perfectly medium on the inside. I like it to be very, very, very slightly pink, okay? And we're gonna slice this into pieces that are somewhere between a half and three quarters of an inch thick. Beautiful, okay? I'll show you in just a moment. We're gonna slice this through. And so you can see this piece Beautiful piece here, okay? Now we're gonna plate that up. And we're gonna plate it with um, some sliced lemon. And we're gonna plate it just like that. And then we're gonna serve it with some coleslaw and two sauces, the traditional tonkatsu sauce and my, and my mustard tonkatsu sauce. Uh, I'll show a photo um, after I uh, finish speaking. And they'll also be on my Instagram. So you can see photos of the final dish at my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice Cook Like a Pro. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.